Will you be free? Yes. Why do we forget? It's like we have this body we come in with and then we forget. Only by choice will we be free. I want to invite every one of you today to stay awake. <laughs> I don't want to forget anymore. I don't want one moment to pass in life where we forget. And something occurs on the journey where we slip into forgetfulness. The fullness of life, the challenges of life, move through us and we have moments of forgetfulness and we forget how powerful we are till we hear you sing and then we remember again but we have the opportunity to be in that space as angels singing every moment of our day we just open the door and stay in remembrance so my ask is today that as she just opens your heart to keep it blown open that can it be safe right in this room for us to be absolutely open and available to go it's open and i'm going to remember yeah yes. that's freedom yes. Yes. so i want to read you some quotes about freedom since we have angels quote now i'm going to move on to these as well also says true freedom is always spiritual it has something to do with your innermost being which cannot be chained handcuffed or put into jail Dwight D. Eisenhower said, to be true to one's own freedom is, in essence, to honor and respect the freedom of all others. Thich Nhat Hanh says, freedom is the basic condition for you to touch life, to touch the blue sky, the trees, the birds, the tea, and the other person. John F. Kennedy said, the best road to progress is freedom's road. And our own wonderful Ernest Holmes says, the road to freedom lies not through mysteries or occult performances, but through the intelligent use of natural forces and laws. He said that close to 100 years ago. I mean, that's profound. Through the intelligent use of natural forces and laws. What did he mean by that? Through the intelligent use. He didn't say by just happenstance, but he's aiming at through the intelligent use of laws that are in motion, that have been in motion for billions of years. This isn't new information. It's us staying awake to live it. These laws that have been in place are absolutely open and available to remind us that we are free. We came in free. The second we took our first breath in this body, we were free. And then we started to forget. And we started to see the limitations that appear in life, the circumstantial evidence, and then we forget until we remember again. But those laws are always in place. There's a wonderful gift here, is that the path to freedom is through that truth. The path to freedom is through us living in our spiritual practices so clearly that we never forget again. Because when we're tuned in to our spiritual truth, our spiritual nature, which is the order of who we are, we're blown open and wide and available to remember. That's our charge each day. May God, may I remember who I am this day and act from that place in my center. May I move forward and greet people in love. May I be open and receptive to forgive and begin again over and over and over again. Because that keeps us awake. But these wonderful laws that have always been in place, that we live in a responsive universe. I give love, I'm going to receive love. It responds to us. So when we have the call for freedom and the world is responding to us and it occurs in our lives. So what does that mean? Your most important job is to stay awake and in that divine channel of spiritual wisdom. It's always there. But when we close the door for a moment and forget, spirit is right there still knocking. Hello, I'm right here. Don't you leave me outside. It's right there. But sometimes we'll fear and circumstantial things close the door. So our job is to each day, what is that channel? How is that channel available to me? And just think about this for a moment. When we're in lack and limitation and fear, you can feel your body constricting. You can physically feel, you take a breath, fear pops up, and everything goes like this. And our entire cells, bones, muscles, everything pulls in. When we're in freedom, we're just like open 
And we get to remember that it's safe to be there, that it's safe to be open. So that takes a practice. That is a willingness to know, you know what? God's got me no matter what. It's right here within me in every single moment so that it can be safe, that your job is to keep this channel available and open. A client of mine this week was caught. A lot of people have been caught lately. Anyone else been caught a lot the last few weeks? She has some energy. I'm just like, whew, getting caught. And she said to me, she said, this was the funniest part. She was working through FaceTime because she's far away. And if I told you how long it took me to get her plugged in and FaceTime so I could see her the right person because I really am stretching in technology, that was most hysterical. By the time I prayed her in, she was cracking up laughing like, okay, are you there yet? Are you there? I'm like, okay, I'm here. I see you. This is a success. This is, the first one was, why were you on the phone and you're supposed to be here? She just can answer on your computer. Oh, I got it. Okay, let me go right to this. I'm stretching in freedom and technology. And as she gets there, she says to me, something was going on in her life that I said, yes, but just if you're going down this path, remember this. Oh, it's something to do with self-care. And I said, you must plug in. How are you going to rejuvenate yourself? What is your pathway to connect again? And she started crying. She said, I don't remember. I don't remember. She said, I can't remember what charges me. She goes, but I'm out of joy. I'm out of, there's nothing left anymore. I'm exhausted. And I looked at her and I go, but the good news is your DNA has not forgotten. It's in your DNA. You don't have to search for it. When we forget, how do we find joy? When we forget, where is it at? I can't remember. Where, what is going on in my life? Our opportunity is right in the middle of it to lean into that presence like we were in meditation and to just open the channel. That the constrictive energy may be like this. Our job is to go straight to prayer, straight to meditation, be available to say, whoa, the presence is right here. Even when it's not looking so pretty. Yeah. Especially when it's not looking so pretty. You know, this isn't a challenge-free life. We didn't sign up and say, I'm only coming in if I have absolutely no challenges. None of us said that. We just said, yes, I'm, I'm signed up and in. But when we got here, suddenly challenges do appear. And we must grow through them. And part of our growing edge is to stay in the availability of, wait, I'm cleaning up that channel and I'm staying present to spirit having a clear place to land because it just wants to come through you. And it'll keep knocking and it'll keep being present for your yes to get bigger. So every day when those challenges appear, we get to remember, wait, it's in my DNA. It's right here. It's right here. I don't have to search outside. I get to be right here. How many of you this week were able to meditate? Brilliant. How many of you this week were you able to meditate every single day? Brilliant. How many of you this week were able to get on Facebook every single day? <laughs> Come on, tell the truth. Tell the truth. Almost every hand is going to go up. I know some of you are thinking, I do not want to put up my hand because I know where she's going with this. Point is, we do make time for social media, don't we? Right? And when we then look at someone and say, oh, I had no time to meditate this week. It was, I was way too busy. We forget, well, wait a minute. We can turn that off and go, I must open my channel. And is this opening my channel or is that opening my channel? You choose. Choice is how we get to freedom. There's a part of when we choose it, we must be willing to let go. Of, we have to clean house constantly. Constantly cleaning house. Mental cleaning house. Where is your consciousness? If you don't clean house on a regular basis, what's going to happen? Are you going to be able to remember who you are? Are you going to remember that you are a spiritual being that's here to create everything you wish to create? No, because you're going to have a cluttered house. So that means your let go is part of the path to freedom. Because if you don't let go, you're carrying a whole bunch of bags with you that's going to get really, really heavy. And that's not going to be the place of freedom. Again, the weight of the journey takes on too much. Uh, two weeks ago, we had a beautiful retreat um, at the sanctuary. And we went through a process that was intense, but a really beautiful process of let go. And I witnessed these beautiful women really seeking and finding the pieces of their soul that they'd still been holding onto that were keeping them stuck. 
the old, just old beliefs, old generational things that they did not need to carry anymore, but they didn't even know they were there until we kept talking about it, digging deeper. We're like in a big archaeological dig. And when they did find them, and their ahas were lifted, then they made a conscious choice under the moon to let them go. They did not need to carry them forward, but if we don't even know they're there, if we don't search them out and wonder, get curious about your patterns, seek, what is that that I keep doing? Ask yourself when somebody says to you, what, do you really mean that when you said, oh, I could have died when that happened, or oh, this could have occurred, nothing good ever happens to me. When people say things like that, and they're in my office, I do preface it when they're in my office, I will say, I'm sorry, I cannot agree with you. And I've had clients look at me like, what? I go, if I agree with you, I'm agreeing to keep you stuck. I can't. I cannot agree with the client who's sitting in front of me only speaking of their limitation. Do we get to seek under it and I get to ask them questions? Where did that come from? What's going on? Let's get deeper to uproot it. And if they look at me and say, don't you agree with me? This is why I'm stuck. I can say, I understand you. I hear you. But if I agree that that limitation is who you are, that I'm not being of service to you. We aren't of service to each other when we agree with your own limitations. Our job is to bust through every limitation we have. We're here to bust through it, and I want to be with people who bust me on my own limitations as I help them through theirs with love. But when we look at each other and say, God, I love you so much, and if I agree to that, then I'm agreeing for you to stay small. We, none of us want to stay small. We want to grow and evolve. We are, we are always evolving. And if we don't stretch, then how are we going to evolve through this? There's a quote that I will say almost in every wedding. I, change, I write the sermon separately for each couple that comes to me. But there's one quote that I ask that this it goes in my service because it's important to me. And I heard it years ago from a wonderful spiritual teacher, Terry Cole Whitaker. Does anyone remember Terry Cole Whitaker? <laughs> I may have told you this quote before, but I love this quote. When she says, um, in the presence of a true friend, you fall in love with yourself. Say it again. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, I'll say it a hundred times. Because I think it's so important, and thank you for saying that. In the presence of a true friend, you fall in love with yourself. Because when you're standing next to someone who will not agree with your limitations, someone who sees you as a spiritual, powerful being, not constricted by the circumstances of your life, but sees your light radiating, you then find it safe to fall in love with yourself. Think about that. When someone is standing there and they love you so much that you see yourself rightly, because they're reflecting it back to you how much they love you. You can't keep carrying the weight of, I'm not enough, because they're looking at you going, oh, you are so much more than enough. That's who we get to walk with. That's who I know that each and every one of you get to do for each other. That's why we show up on Sundays. Thank you all for being here today. Woo! reflecting right back at you. That you look at each other and say, I know who you are. I know who you are bigger than a title of where you came from, bigger where you grow, grew up at, bigger than this country. I know who you are. That's how we get to keep operating in life. That's freedom. Because then we're not agreeing with any constraints of the past. We're bigger than the constraints. Our consciousness is not determined by location. So anyone who feels like they're stuck in a constraint, their consciousness gets to keep growing and growing and stand for freedom no matter if there are walls around them. Nelson Mandela saw through those walls because his consciousness kept growing. His consciousness kept growing. He didn't get stuck by the visual that was before him. As spiritual beings, see that challenge. Do not ignore it, but see straight through the center of it. See love and light straight through the center of it. Because when you do, you transform the circumstances. Or as Reverend Michael says, they bend to you. They stop blocking you. They bend to you when you stand in faith. And no, I choose freedom even now. Even now in the midst of this. Yes. Then all circumstances change towards you. 
to say yes because this is a responsive universe. That's how it occurs. We get to keep growing, evolving, letting go, remembering who we are, and being in a consciousness, a community that reminds us of our grace, reminds us of our power, that sees it before we even do. And you may not get that on Facebook. <laughs> you may. You may, and my point being is, if you balance it out with how much time am I in meditation and prayer and how much time am I on social media, we have the speed of technology that is a joy. I was in this business meeting Friday night, and I was being educated by my wonderful team about how they were saying, Kim, you've got to get much faster on all this social media. We need you to be doing Facebook Live every day. And I'm like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I'm just doing this. And I'm like, you mean I'm supposed to go like this every day? What? Like, this, that's wild. And so they were trying to catch me up, and I said something about, but we'll lose that connection or something. They both looked at each other and went, oh, could she just get on board? Mm -hmm. And I said, wait one second. I, I, I speak about this. If we're out of balance, there's times I don't want to do this. I want to do this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. I want to look at you and have a conversation. I want to pick up the phone and say, how are you, and hear your voice. Because if it were out of balance in this wonderful world that's giving us the gift of technology all faster than light, then it is our responsibility to keep the channel open. This is how we keep the channel open. I must be balanced and responsible to do my practice every day so that I don't get caught in this. I get lifted, but not caught. Do you feel the difference? that I get lifted because I'm gaining the wisdom of the world in mass, all this information coming at me, but I don't lose the human connection, that spiritual truth that I want to touch people, know people, I want to be in their presence so that they can see the light of me and I can see the light of them and together we're changing the world. We're not going to change the world simply by being behind a computer and not seeing each other. We must look up and say, bless this and oh my God, bless us. Yes? Yes. So that balance is so necessary. So we must constantly be in let go, constantly be in, who is my channel clear, is my channel clear? I charge you all this next week that when you start to get caught by a moment of forgetfulness, of forgetting who you are, of questioning what's going on, feeling free, check your body. Your body starts tensing up. You're going to be like, who I'm not feeling free. What do I need to do to feel free? What do I need to do to feel free right now? Just think for a moment of at least one thing you can do each day to feel free. Just one. You got a few? Okay, good. I want you to do this every single day. Every moment, find that pathway to what brings me freedom because it's the natural order of your life. It is your consciousness. Your consciousness is free, so please cultivate it regularly, constantly, consistently to stay awake so that the outside world does not take you down into forgetfulness. That is our job. When you catch the insights, when you're still. Did anyone catch an insight today in meditation? Catch it's vibration. When you catch an insight, this came up at the... Uh, retreat two weeks ago. It came through. It was one of those insights that came through and then I went like this. Ladies, what did I just say? Spirit said something. Somebody tell me what it was. And they're all like, oh wait, you said this. And I was like, oh, thank you, thank you. But what Spirit said is when you catch an insight and propel it into action, that is freedom. Is that what I said? See, she's checking. But when you catch the insight in life, whatever your insight is, but you propel it into action, that is freedom. Because when we hold insights like, oh, that would be great if I went and meditated every day, but don't do it. Oh, that'd be great if I called that person and told them I love them so much and I'm so grateful they're in my but we don't do it. We're still caught. Think about that for a moment. Insights that just sit still, I'm not gonna tell you what Reverend Michael says they are, because I can't say it. But when they just sit still, and aren't propelled into motion, then they just sink. They will go to someone else who's gonna pick it up and put it into action. Look at your life today and think, what insights have I caught that are necessary for me today to propel into action so that I may be free? Because without putting it into action, it goes into stagnation, and I don't want any of us to be in stagnation. Let's go.
Let's go. <laughs> He's like, you are ready. He said, so put that inside into action today. So you have charges today, I'm asking of you, is to really catch it, move it into action, and allow yourself to absolutely be in full, full throttle freedom by right of consciousness, not by location. You got what I'm saying there? By right of consciousness, you are free. It has nothing to do with location, with relationship, with your job, with where you live. It has nothing to do with that. You choose freedom today. And who says yes to that? Yes. Absolutely. All aboard for, ooh, that was good. Get on the train for freedom. I have to read to you something. Hold on, there's something about, oh, this one. I got this fabulous book for my birthday, The Book of Joy. And Desmond Tutu had something to say about Nelson Mandela and challenges in life and freedom. So I want to read it to you before I close. Is that okay? He says, you know, when Nelson Mandela went to jail, he was young. And you could almost say bloodthirsty. He was head of the armed wing of the African National Congress, his party. He spent 27 years in jail. I cry every time I say it. 27 years. Oh, what a waste. He says, and I think people are surprised when I, Desmond Tutu, says no, the 27 years were necessary. They were necessary to remove the dross, the suffering in prison helped him to become more magnanimous, willing to listen to the other side, to discover that the people he regarded as enemy, they too were human beings who had fears and expectations. And they had been molded by their society. And so without the 27 years, I don't think we would have seen the Nelson Mandela with the compassion, the capacity to put himself in the shoes of others. That's a lot to say from a very wise man. So what I'm pointing to is very often we look at our journey and think, why am I going through these challenges? Why? And I ask you to put the why to the side and ask a bigger question. He was cultivating consciousness. Do we wish he wasn't there? You bet. Doesn't mean we wish he was there, we wish he wasn't, but he chose to cultivate consciousness bigger than location. We all have that opportunity in our lives every single day, every conversation, we have the opportunity to choose. Our consciousness is free and it is not limited by anything. So I ask you this day to stand in your freedom boldly, everywhere, untethered, just like spirit shines through you, unlimited. There is no stop to it. You are unlimited, powerful beings that all you get to do is keep the channel open and keep your light shining so brightly that freedom reigns true, not just for us, but for the entire world. That's what we signed up for. Whew, and that's what I'm saying yes to. Can we please go to prayer on that? Yes. How good it is to be so present in life that we are just breathing together, living together, knowing together that the consciousness within this space through all of everywhere that these words are being heard, that the consciousness is landing, that there is spiritual wisdom right here, right now, fully amplified, that our job, that what we are saying yes to, our charge as spiritual awake beings is to stay awake, to keep that channel open and available, to listen and to catch spiritual wisdom with every breath so that with every step forward, our choices are love-inspired, our light lifted, our joy and passion and compassion bringing others to one another and to themselves. This day, every individual within the earshot of my voice is taking a stand for love taking a stand to be so loving for the ones we walk with that we hold a safe zone for them to love themselves purely in our presence. For judgment is dropped, our let go is dropped, we've cleaned the house, and we are available to just choose freedom by the light of our consciousness. I bless the center, I bless everyone in this room with these thoughts, connections, love with one another to lift them out unto their lives, remembering who they are and that their ability to choose to stay awake and be free is just a breath of thing. And for this, I give abundant thanks 
abundant thanks. I bless Soul Center. I bless us all. I bless the world. And I release this word with free flowing love as I together we say, and so it is. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There. And I'm not crying now. Woo! Did you sing again? And I'm just saying, I'm just tissue, I brought it with me this time. Can I pull up our wonderful ushers this day? This is that beautiful conscious giving time. That when we're living in that field of receptivity, let's remember that this wonderful center needs to be lifted and thrived through our giving. So give generously from your heart and bless us all. Thank you too. Thank you.